A roundup of the latest news now. Here are our top stories. Princes or paupers, the UK royal family sign up for universal credit as the UK cost of living crisis bites. A rocky ride for the British government as former Prime Minister Liz Truss and former Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng spend a combined total of 45 minutes in office. Driving while black, the Metropolitan Police kills yet another unarmed black man. Palestinians seek an apology from Britain for alleged war crimes in British Mandate Palestine. We'll have a special report. And footballer Mohamed Salah is dropped for the first time in his Liverpool career, leading to a record six-minute Champions League hat-trick when he's finally brought on. More on those top stories to come. First to the UK, and in an unprecedented move, much of the UK royal family has signed up for state benefits or universal credit as they struggle with the rising cost of living. I spoke to King Charles to find out more. Your Majesty, thank you for joining us from Buckingham Palace. Why have you and other members of the royal family had to apply for state benefits? Is the £100 million annual royal grant not sufficient? Hello, Bob. You obviously haven't had to manage multiple palaces, stables and farms across the UK and spanning most of Romania, where I'm the biggest private landowner. Bloody difficult and expensive, to say the least. Many think of the royal family as being at the other end of the socio-economic scale to the have-nots and poorest sections of society. How has the royal family's wealth resulted in a need to seek state benefits? Well, the truth is we're a taxpayer's expense. We don't really bring any money in. I sell a few turnips and cabbages from my farms, but it's pocket change against our outgoings. How did you qualify? Isn't universal credit means tested? It is, but I handed over a party bag of Qatari cash to get us moved up the queue. Why are you wearing a balaclava indoors? Well, you see, it's rather chilly tonight, and we've been thinking of ways to cut down on expenses. Our heating bill alone is a million pounds a month, old chap. King Charles there, speaking to me from Buckingham Palace. UK Prime Minister Liz Truss has resigned and former Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng has been sacked after a combined total of 45 minutes in office, following allegations of incompetence and widespread criticism for announcing tax cuts for top-rate UK taxpayers at a time of rising inflation. We're joined by political analyst Ellie Tist. Ellie, why did this happen and where does the UK go from here? Well, if you believe the press, it's the tax cuts. But the reality is that cutting taxes has long been a concerted Tory policy. Nothing new there. What was new uh, was a black man as Chancellor, and neither the British establishment nor UK press could stomach it. The real issue was Liz Truss, who'd taken the PM role to a new low, outdoing even Boris Johnson with her levels of mental vacuousness, which many thought wasn't possible. The reality is that Kwarteng was an easy scapegoat. His sacking was a desperate attempt to appear to be getting things back on track. When that wasn't enough, Truss had to go. Are there any credible candidates to replace the outgoing PM? You'll find more credibility at a con artist convention. But uh, Sunak, despite being as corrupt as the rest of them, would be the most sensible choice until the Labour Party gets up off its arse. Um, what about Kwarteng's successor? You mean Jeremy? I mean Hunt? Yes. Oh, he's just the. To add insult to injury, as he left Whitehall, Kwarteng was pulled over by police to be stopped and searched in what the Metropolitan Police have described as a case of mistaken identity. What do you make of that? Well, that's just another example of driving while black being treated as a criminal offence. It won't change until real punishments are consistently applied to force a change in policing culture. Ellie, thank you. Also on the subject of the Metropolitan Police's treatment of the black community, Chris Cabber, an unarmed black man and 24-year-old father-to-be, was shot and killed by police officers tailing his vehicle in Streatham last month. The Met Police have referred themselves to the IOPC, or Independent Office for Police Conduct, and an inquest into the killing has begun. The IOPC investigation is ongoing. In the meantime, the Metropolitan Police has issued a statement urging the general public to avoid driving while black. The statement goes on to encourage the black community to ideally avoid all other kinds of physical displacement, including walking, running, cycling, skateboarding, scooters, mopeds, motorcycles and public transport, and to stay indoors indefinitely in a bid to improve statistics on discriminatory police practices.
A group of Palestinians has presented a dossier of evidence to the British government seeking an apology for alleged war crimes it committed in British Mandate Palestine. I'm joined by legal affairs correspondent KC Strike. KC, what do you make of this claim? Well, the British government was instrumental in the mass killing, dispossession and forcible displacement of Palestinians following the Balfour Declaration. Uh, it paved the way for and played a key role in the establishment of the State of Israel and crimes Israel carried out and continues to carry out at Palestinians' expense. The remedy for the damage uh, Palestinians were done is some form of compensation. Uh, an apology doesn't come close to compensating Palestinians for the suffering and loss they endured. It's a largely meaningless gesture. So why seek an apology? I suppose because the English are very good at uh, apologising after seizing land and resources that aren't theirs, uh, massacring the inhabitants and forcing them out. Uh, That's essentially how they ran the empire. Terribly sorry, old chap, we're going to have to take over your country. Do you think Britain will apologise to or compensate Palestinians? Of course not. Because if they did, most of the world would be queuing up to demand the same. Uh, And let's face it, there's more chance of the UK ceding its sovereignty to Papua New Guinea. Footballer Mohamed Salah was dropped for the Champions League match against Rangers earlier this month. When he was brought on as a second-half substitute, he went on to score a hat-trick in six minutes, a record in the Champions League. I caught up with the Egyptian forward outside Liverpool's training ground. It's not been a great start to the season for you or for Liverpool, a joint Top scorer last season, just three goals so far this season, which on your current salary of £400,000 a week works out at over £2.5 million per goal. A bit pricey, don't you think? (laughs) You think you are a comedian? Okay, I laugh, but not with you. I laugh at you, like I laugh at the Ballon d'Or judges last season. Of course, even the best have good days and bad days. When the manager dropped you for the Rangers game, did that fire you up to perform when you came on? I am a pharaoh. I always have fire inside me. We built the pyramids. We have so much strength and energy. Some have argued that increasing your wages to £400,000 a week has taken all the energy out of you, made you lackadaisical and complacent. Fuck this! Mo! Mo! He just stormed off.